So we are here in Siem Reap, in one of the hundreds of temples that you can visit and photograph here in Cambodia. And gosh, um, you know what? Even if you read so much on all these structures, even if you read all the travel guides or watch all the videos, what you expect out of this place is actually going to be exceeded even more no matter how much preparation or how much reading you do prior. So in this video let me show you some of the ways that I found useful in photographing all these temples in CM Rape. Now first, of course, is the most basic way of photographing any architectural structure. May that be something modern or something ancient like this. At first, I came here thinking that I would be doing a lot of landscape photography, when in reality, what I'm actually doing is architectural photography, but kind of ancient architectural photography. And of course, if you saw my last video in Singapore, then you would have seen that there are many ways to do travel photography. And this is also a way to do that. Focusing on the architecture of a place also talks about the culture and the history and Cambodia definitely is characterized by all these temples that you can visit. Now as a start, of course, the easiest way to be photographing temples in Cambodia is just filling the frame and just composing, you know, just the typical photography that you would do at any landmark. However, there is that tendency that you're going to have to deal with a lot of perspective distortion and also you're not going to be able to create unique images, not as much as you'd want. So you're going to have to take a few more steps towards being more creative just to come up with better photos of the temples that you visit. And of course, each temple has a different location, a different characteristic, so you're going to have to be able to adapt to that. Now the next approach that you can do is basically go creative with all the framing. In these temples, you're going to find a lot of windows, a lot of hallways, a lot of vanishing points. And one thing you're going to have to deal with is also your fellow tourists. That being said, it's up to you if you want to try and wait for a moment wherein there are no tourists, or you can simply make use of them as human elements in the frame. That's going to enhance the storytelling that you're going to have in your travel photos and definitely it's going to put a bit more life into these photos. Now there are definitely some locations wherein you're going to have to tap into the landscape photographer in you. In some of these temples you're going to have to deal with some moving elements. For one, there is one temple I particularly like wherein the pagoda is surrounded by water. And that means you're going to be able to do long exposures, create satisfying textures, and at the same time make use of the reflections. That being said, when you travel here, you're going to have to be prepared with some gear. I, for one, made sure to have an ultra wide angle lens, which is a Sony 16 to 35 millimeter, and I also have a very versatile zoom lens, which is a 24 to 105. I sacrificed bringing a telephoto here, thinking that a 24 to 105 will do enough, and quite frankly, it is. In addition to those, of course, if you have filters, it would be good so you can play around with your exposures and, of course, a good and reliable tripod that is also lightweight and portable. Now, perhaps one of the trickiest things to do here is find good architectural perspective that doesn't really distort, but at the same time be able to get the entire temple in frame. Now, if you've ever tried doing that, following the guide on your camera, avoiding any tilt, you would have some significant foreground. Now, the good thing is that when you're photographing temples, a lot of them are actually elevated a bit from the ground. This means that if you have enough room to back up, you will have the entire temple in frame. However, there will be a lot on the lower part of the photo or on the foreground. 
In one of the temples, I was able to find a circular set of blocks that I think were originally created to be a fire pit or something like that. And by having that in my foreground, it kind of created a circular path that leads towards the main temple. At the same time, it also gives your viewers the simple building blocks that create all of these majestic ancient temples. Another approach that I did is to make use of some of the roots of the big trees that you can find. Of course, all these temples are in the middle of the Cambodian jungle, and that means that there are a lot of ginormous trees with ginormous roots on the ground. Now all you have to do is really look for the most interesting looking roots, or maybe look for roots that actually point towards the temple and use them as your foreground. You don't necessarily have to do long exposure except for when there are a lot of people walking around. In any case, whether you do long exposure or you just do it handheld, all you have to do is find the right composition that will make use of these foreground elements that will help your composition. Now of course there is a bit of a tendency to overpower the composition, but I think that's better than actually just settling with a plain composition with no foreground at all. At the same time, the foreground elements that we are using are also part of the structures one way or another because these temples are really embedded within nature. Now as I said, there are some temples wherein you're going to have to deal with some people walking around in your frame and you have no control over that. Now one thing you can of course do is wait, however sometimes that's never going to be useful because there are a lot of people, especially during sunrise and sunset. What you can do is to look for something on the ground, maybe some rocks, some steps, some blocks, or anything that is natural within the temples, and use them as kind of a frame to help avoid having the people in your photos. Of course, there are so many things that you can do to photograph these temples. Your creativity will definitely be triggered and challenged in this, but I think it's a really good exercise when it comes to landscape photography, travel photography, and architectural photography. And you're never going to run out of ways to take photos just as long as you're always trying to keep an eye out for unique perspectives. Now, of course, when you visit Cambodia, there are definitely so many things you can do and experience and learn while you are here. Aside from the temples, there are so many more things to take a look at. Definitely check out also their hospitality. And of course, the food here in Cambodia is just amazing. But when you do visit here, always remember that your primary focus should not always be just taking photos, but learn a lot, read a lot, ask a lot, and meet a lot of the amazing people here. You're gonna meet, of course, amazing people here from Cambodia, and of course, as well, a lot of amazing tourists. Cambodia is definitely a haven for photographers, and almost everyone you meet here will greet you with a smile. In any case, if you have any questions about what I said or about going to Cambodia, then leave them down below in the comment section. Now, of course, my name is Nico Valenzuela. I am a landscape and architectural photographer who also travels. And if you are new to the channel, then you're going to find a lot of content about those things in this channel. So if you're interested, please click that subscribe button and that notification bell. In any case, thank you for joining me here in CM Reap and see you on the next video.